Let's see here. I think I'm gonna do Hootie. That's right. The beer with a band name from the 90s. Hootie, where are the blowfish? I couldn't tell you, but it's a hazy IPA. And we're gonna go ahead and try some of this here Hootie. But uh, before I do that, I'm gonna go dump this glass out so that I can pour it in there. Yeah! Right now I can only watch you via audio because my internet is pretty fucked up at the moment. Oh man, I'm sorry. Um, I just got hooked up with the good stuff. I got uh, 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 Verizon Fios uh, gigabit ethernet. So uh, my computer, I tested the internet connection uh, before this stream and I was at about 500 uh, megs per second uh, on the computer side and at about 380 on the PlayStation 4 side. So between these two devices, um, good lord, I've, I've got a fabulous connection. Um, well, all right, then I'll be sure to describe uh, uh, everything as, as diligently as possible so that you can get the full experience um, of this this hazy IPA. It says, let your instincts take over. Channel your inner beast. When our brewmaster pulls a fresh beer off the canning line, he brings everyone close to crack it open and inhale the instantaneous aroma explosion. It's ritualistic. This sort of obsession led to vision quests in Pacific Northwest hop fields, not to mention years of maniacal recipe modifications on a small scale. Embrace your inner hootie and fly silently into the night. I don't know what any of that has to do with um, why would they name the beer Hootie? I have no idea. And I don't know why it's a hazy IPA. Uh, I They're labeling th this this company, like their, their weird little monologues on the back are, are very confusing. This is a six point brewery Hootie. And I'm going to go ahead and hail the vapors as I crack it. Oh, that's hoppy, all right. Let's see here. I'm back, and I had to deal with some Microsoft bullshit. Well, I'm sorry about that. Don't don't deal with Microsoft bullshit. That's uh, I mean, I'm I'm there. I'm right there with you. But who who wants to do that? Let's see here. Okay, so it's very hoppy. I've got that. There's also. Yeah, I'm not gonna snort it this time. Thank you. You got it on video once, and that's that's. That's all. That's all I've got for you. Um, no, it's got some... There's some hoppiness and some fruitiness to it. It's not the dry floral kind of hoppiness that I expect from an IPA. This is a, um, this is a sweeter smelling uh, hoppiness. Um, maybe getting some, some light hints of uh, stone fruit in there. But let's go ahead and pour it. It's a new... Oh, that's why they call it a hazy IPA, baby. Because it's hazy. That beer is uh, mostly head, by the way. That's that's what you get when you pour it directly. They say, they always do the tilt in the movies. I see that. They, they tilt the glass when they fill it up. But actually, I hear you release more of the aromas and get more of the flavor of the beer if you just slam this thing straight into the bottom and let it form a big foamy head. Uh, that's what I hear from, from the experts. Uh, mm. and that foam is hoppy and there's a bittersweet quality to it um, there's a sweetness and a tang going on like a tart sort of a flavor that I'm picking up on there uh, fruity pour this right by the mic. Mmm. A nice zippy, tangy, fruity thing going on. Uh, and I'm just fine with that. Now you look at the beer itself and it is not opaque, but as they say, hazy. Uh, oh, there it goes. <laughs> 
<laughs> saw that little guy hanging out there. I'm sorry about that. That was a little gross. Um, but yeah, it's quite a hazy IPA. The thing I like about hazy IPAs is that they've usually got some of the characteristics of an IPA uh, and some of the characteristics of um, a, a more malty uh, uh, yeasty beer. Uh, it seems like they've, they've kind of combined two, two things that I very much like. Um, sorry, I'm having a lot of mustache problems with this particular beer. I, I apologize for, um, well, everything, really. Uh, but what I'm getting here is... Huh. It's sweet. It's tangy. And then on the tail end, it's bitter. Um, it has certainly has the ale flavor. It's got a roasted sort of profile. It, it, it feels like... Um, if you get yourself like a, a Pilsner, they just taste like watery and uh, kind of fruity. Um, and, and but they don't have like a, a there's no smoke in there there's no burn there's no cook it doesn't feel cooked it's like if I took corn and boiled it I get one flavor and if I take corn and I put it on the grill and grill it I get a very different flavor and that's the best comparison I get between um, th this sort of IPA thing that I've got going the difference between uh, a beer and an ale. Ales usually have roastier flavors to them, in in my opinion. Uh, Hazy's IPAs have this fantastic mouth feel, where it just feels like the whole thing is just full of fizz and zing, um, all the way through. It's it's almost like drinking, uh, like a, a th it's thicker. Uh, it's, it's not like drinking a, a plain beverage you're, you're getting, uh, uh, a sort of a, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's, it's like it's boiling and, and fizzing in your mouth a little bit. And it's, it's, I don't want to say chunkier because that sounds all wrong, but it, it absolutely does say, um, um, I, I just read CA hipster. I just read your post. It says, do you have something like a PO box where I can send you something? I would love to send you some German beer to test and fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't have a PO box, but I'll open one. If you're going to send me German beer, I'm all about that shit. Uh, <laughs> that sounds phenomenal. Um, God damn Germans do it right. I, I know that you guys and the, and the Belgians are like the, the world pros on the beer front. Uh, the Americans, not too far behind you at this point, honestly, though. The microbreweries we've got going in this country are kicking out some really good stuff. This guy is really, really nice. It's, it, nice. It's refreshing. It's, I don't want to say light. A lot of times IPAs, I'll say it's light. It feels like you're not drinking much. You know, it's it's sort of uh, thin and watery and stuff. No, this is this is thicker. This is a heavier drink to to put down, um, and it definitely has a, like a more filling quality. It it feels like I'm drinking a wet loaf of bread. Um, <clears throat> just as long as you don't send me some good cologne from beer, we'll be fine. Good beer from Cologne. I'm down for that. I'm 100% down for that. Yeah, I should open a P.O. box and then you guys just <laughs> send me booze to try. <laughs> Indigo would love that. She'd be like, oh, great. They're encouraging his drinking. Um... <laughs> no, but I, I would I would absolutely, I would 100% love that. That'd be really cool. Um, yeah, this is really nice. It's it's light, it's crisp. There's the, the the bitter aftertaste is very powerful on this one. Um, if you it, like, if you, I'm I'm about halfway through the glass now, and when you get to this point, the bitterness really starts to kick in. But that's okay. I'm a grown up. I like bitter sometimes. Um, the and you could throw in some Bavarian. <sighs> 
Hm. Mein Schatz. <lacht> I, I'm 100% down for that. You know, uh, my my uh, ancestry is uh, is uh, partially German. We're Scottish, Irish, English, and German on paper. Uh, I don't really have any greater knowledge than that, aside from the fact that the Scottish side of me comes from Clan Watson. I know that. But the uh, the last name, Buschler, I think is at least sort of common in Germany. Um, I'm not certain that we actually were Buschlers, though. There's a story in my family that we actually arrived here at Ellis Island in the United States as a Boogler. And that they hadn't seen any Booglers there, so they just threw us in with the Booglers. But I don't know how much of that is accurate, and I don't know how to spell Boogler, so I I really I don't have all the information that I would like to have on that front. Uh, but what are you going to do? Either way, Booglers is uh, uh, certainly a very German last name. Uh, Granddad was very proud of his ancestry, and I still have, there are some steins. Uh, Grandpa actually has a couple of, of uh, different steins that are from the old country, and he passed them down to my father, and my father uh, has yet to, to pass them on to uh, any of my brothers or I. I think he's, he's still kind of holding on to those a bit. But um, they're getting older, and they're getting to the age where they're starting to, to hand us some cool stuff. Um, for instance, the, the dressers in my bedroom are uh, a, a cool set of antique dressers that are, you know, were handed down to me by my parents. Uh, the Victrola, my fabulous Victrola player that we've got behind me, which you can totally redeem a song on anytime you like. Um, and they, uh, uh, that was a, a hand-me-down for my parents. Really, really nice little uh, machine. Mm. Mighty fine beverage. Buckler beer? A v Victrola player? Have you not seen the Victrola, dude? Alright, we, well, here we go. We gotta... First of all, that was Hootie by Six Point Brewery. Uh, now, secondly, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the Victrola. 